Welcome everyone, iOS 16 has released to the iPhone 8 in the form of Beta 1. Let's take a look at all the new features with iOS 16 on the iPhone 8 specifically and a full review. So I'm going to cover performance, battery life and stability. Do keep in mind this is Beta 1, so future betas will solve any issues I'll be reporting. Alright, let's take a look at the lock screen. This is where uh, the main features are. So you're going to notice, uh, number one, we have brand new uh, complications inside of the lock screen. So this is similar to an Apple Watch if you ever owned a Apple Watch. So I just unlock this one right here. You can see uh, you can add all of these mini widgets. You can now do that with your iPhone. Now you can also customize this stuff. So in order to customize, you just long press on the lock screen and you can be brought to this view. And then from here, if you would like to create a brand new wallpaper, you just slide to the left, okay? So slide to the left and then you'll see here, add new. You can also customize your existing lock screens, but keep in mind if you are updating from iOS 15, the old uh, lock screen you created in iOS 15 uh, cannot be customized, okay? So you can see here, if I tap on customize, uh, it requires I create a new lock screen in the iOS 16 format. So let's just go over, let's tap on the plus, and you're gonna notice we can now uh, add our own picture. We can use all of these custom wallpapers. And this is really cool because Apple of iOS 16, they've introduced a ton of wallpapers uh, compared to iOS 15, which had like one or two. So if we just tap on the wallpaper here, so I'm just gonna uh, choose this one, and you're gonna notice uh, we have all of these outlines. So here's what's up. Not all wallpapers will have all of the features which iOS 16 allows. So uh, you can see here, there is a little tab for the widgets. Not all wallpapers have this tab. This seems like a bug in beta one. Uh, hopefully that'll be fixed in a future update. Uh, another thing as well is some uh, wallpapers will not allow you to customize uh, the date and time here. Uh, so you see here, choose the 7th of June. You can change this with a calendar event, something like that. You can also change it to, you know, when the sunrise starts, uh, etc. Uh, that isn't currently available in every wallpaper. Hopefully that will be fixed with a future update. Now let's just tap on the plus here. And when you tap on the plus, you're going to see this menu. Now this menu is really laggy. Uh, so if I just add some widgets, so we'll do like that, boom. Uh, and if I drag and drop, you can see it's a bit laggy. I don't know if you'll be able to tell because um, uh, the frame rate isn't the best. And this here, this is only running at 20 FPS. Uh, you can really tell that lag uh, if you are watching at the highest quality. Uh, honestly, knowing that this looks kind of like Widget Smith, I wouldn't uh, be surprised if these lag issues, they're going to be solved with a future beta or the public release of iOS 16. Honestly, the lock screen it's kind of cool, but it isn't as impressive as I thought. The main reason is you cannot move around uh, the time, you cannot move around the widgets, and you cannot move around the date. So that's something to keep in mind. Another new feature of iOS 16 is the lock screen is now chained with the focus. So in iOS 15, you could have focus modes, which are these right here. So let's say you were going to go to sleep. You could have it uh, so the wallpaper changed. However, you had to do this long, complex automation inside of Siri shortcuts. Now you don't need to do that, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up the settings and inside of the settings, you're gonna see the new focus, okay? And once you're here, you tap on your focus mode and here is the new menu, customize screen. So you just tap on edit and from here, you can either create new lock screen wallpaper or you can use your existing lock screen wallpapers you created. So let's choose this one here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn off the, uh, I'm just gonna use this uh, do not deserve uh, focus. Then I'm going to switch to the sleep focus and it's going to change the wallpaper, okay? So uh, you can see uh, this is the lock screen wallpaper and uh, that's the one I selected. So I'll go to lock screen, boom, just like that you have uh, uh, the new lock screen. Now if I uh, turn off the focus, okay, it changes the wallpaper back to the original one and of course each focus can have a different lock screen wallpaper. It is a pretty darn cool feature inside of iOS 16. Okay, let's take a look at the messages. So this is going to be a pretty darn cool feature. Do keep in mind that this is only available uh, to people with iOS 16, okay? So this will make sense now. So if I go to this message here, uh, you can now undo and edit messages. So how does that work? Well, if I send a message, I'm not going to do it because I've, I've did it a lot of times yesterday, I don't know this guy, but if I just send a message, for example, uh, once you send a message, uh, it will send, okay? So the you know, a receiver may receive a notification if they sort fast enough, but let's say you said something embarrassing, you want to undo it. Well, guess what? You can long press on the message. This will expire after a couple of hours, but if you long press, there will be an option which allows you to undo 
the message, right? And once you undo the message, you get a little fancy animation and the message will be removed. So uh, as long as the receiver has an internet connection, it will be removed off of their device. Another thing as well is you can edit the messages you send. Uh, so the edit messages, uh, people with iOS 15 will also see your edits, which is uh, pretty darn cool. However, keep in mind, if you undo a message on iOS 16, okay, iOS 15 users and older will still see the message. It will not be removed off of their device as iOS 15 doesn't have the undo part programmed, right? So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, friends that are on iOS uh, 15 and older, they won't uh, see any messages you undo. Now they've also changed FaceTime. So when it comes to FaceTime, uh, share play. This is a feature where you can share your screen. Let's say you're with uh, you know, a bunch of friends, you want to watch some movies, well, you can share the movies. And inside of FaceTime, they've changed it so you can easily start a share place. There'll be a, uh, on the right-hand side, there'll be a button. You just choose the app, and it'll go into the app and share your screen. They've also added share play into messages as well. I don't know how that works. It doesn't seem to be in beta 1. However, that may come out in the future. Now, something if you're a subscriber, you'll care about. So uh, if you go to settings here, there is now this new mode. It's called developer mode. So uh, if we go to settings and then we go into the privacy and I don't see if no clue where we go privacy and you see here developer mode. This is now uh, new in iOS 16. Now, when it comes to developer mode, this is something which uh, is a bit of an issue. So they've made it. So if you care about side loading apps, you have to turn this toggle on. And if this toggle is not on, uh, side loading will not work. So this is just something extra that Apple forces you uh, in order to use side loading. They've also made it, if you have, you know, Wi-Fi network, you want to uh, view your password, you can now do that. So uh, there was a little, you know, glitch that you could do in iOS 15 to do that. But in iOS 16, it is now a native feature. So if I go to this network here, if you tap on the I, okay, uh, there is usually an option which shows the password. And for some reason, it's not showing up here, which is really weird. Uh, it should show up. This uh, this may be a glitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect actively to the network. Okay. I don't have the, I, I'm not even on this network. I would show the password for this network here. However, uh, it's the password I use on like 20 websites. So I don't want to get hacked and so I will not be showing that. But you did, if you just tap on the eye, it will show the password for the network as long as you connected to it in the past. All right, they've changed some new things in the maps. So when it comes to the maps, I would open up a little chart my address. You can now add stops to your route. So let's say you're going from point A to point B and on the way you want to stop to, you know, let's say Tesco or some, uh, some Best Buy, something like that. Uh, guess what you can do now? Well, you can have it so you can add up to 10 stops. So, you know, one stop to Best Buy, one stop to the petrol station, and you can have that on your way to your route. And the GPS or the maps, it will show, Show the stops on the way, okay? So it will route you to stop one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it will move you to your final destination. That is pretty darn cool. And another thing as well is if you care about the train tickets, the bus ticket, you can now view the prices and the timetable for your buses, for your trains, uh, and all public transport inside of the maps as well. Now, when it comes to wallet, they've done some new things as well. So there is now buy now, pay later, okay? So they've added credit into uh, Apple Pay, which is interesting. I haven't seen them say that you need to have a good credit score or any credit at all, which is interesting. Would they allow anyone to use this? 16 year olds? I don't know. Hopefully not, to be honest, because uh, you shouldn't be, you know, spending other people's money or well, unofficially should. But the point is, uh, if you have a card and you want to buy something, there's an option to buy now, pay later, and it will allow you to do it in four. Uh, installments so the service you're using has to support apple pay uh, on the device i'm not sure if you can do buy now pay later let's say you're using apple pay inside of a store i don't think that's available however if you're doing online purchases uh you don't need to do anything uh any website is supported uh which supports apple pay and that is a uh, pretty darn cool now there's some other things as well so inside of the uh the uh, tv app uh, which has the an apple tv you can now watch up to two Sport games for free, completely for free, a week. So if you care about sport games, NBA, stuff like that, you're going to be able to do that now uh, in iOS 16. If you're a family as well, they've changed some stuff. So instead of the family sharing, uh, you can now have iCloud family photo sharing. Okay, so uh, let's say uh, you have all these more other devices and uh, you know they have all these different photos. You can group all the photos into one folder and that folder everyone can access without fail. 
They've also made it so if you are a child, you can add more screen time by using iMessage. So usually, uh, you know, when you uh, when when apps restricted, you get a little prompt which says "ask for more time." Well, now you can just go to messages and you can send a message to a parent asking for more time that is now available in iOS 16. They've also added CarPlay stuff, so uh, this will not be seen until late 2023, but they've redesigned CarPlay. Uh, you will need a new car which has it, so uh, you can change the dashboard to be CarPlay exclusive, so the accelerometer, stuff like that, can be seen via CarPlay. I don't know if you'd want, you know, a, a digital reading of your speed, stuff like that, but it is available uh, if you would like to. And that's really the main stuff of iOS 16. Now let's go through how iOS 16 performs on the iPhone again. This is beta one, this could change in the future. All right, let's take a look at this. So when it comes to the app launch times, I used iOS 15 on the iPhone 8 as my daily driver, so I can give you a good analysis of how things perform. And they perform just like iOS 15. It's impressive, it really is impressive. So if I just close out apps here and I launch them up, uh, you can see the app launch times, they're not the fastest, but here's the deal, okay? Most YouTubers thinking about, oh, the app launch time is fine, it's fine, it's fine but they don't have any apps installed, they don't have any data on the phone, so everything's gonna be fast, obviously, because you don't need to think of any servers, uh, there's no apps installed, stuff like that, okay? I have all of my personal data on this device, and you know, iOS 15 was pretty darn slow on iPhone, I'm just gonna keep it real, and iOS 16 doesn't make things slower, and that's important, right? Of course, lock screen, there is a lot of lag on the lock screen when it comes to, you know, dragging the widgets, but that can be fixed with a beta update. The important part you care about is, can I load up my apps fast? And the answer is, yes, you can. Uh, there's no uh, difference between iOS 15 and 16, which is notable. There could be like a 0.001 millisecond delay. But when it comes to actually, you know, loading up the applications, it's going to load up fast. And that is all that matters. All right, when it comes to battery, this is a, a surprise. So iOS 14 beta, iOS 15 beta uh, was known for the terrible battery, but iOS 16 beta is really good battery life. Like, I don't, it's impressive. I think when it, when Apple now, they just want to make sure that, because a lot of people, they're going to install the beta, uh, even if it's meant for developers only, okay? Uh, and you may be watching this video if you want to install the beta, tutorial in the description, uh, but if you are thinking about it, battery life is really good. It is... I wouldn't say it's worse than iOS 15, but I wouldn't say it's better. It generally is the same. Like, I'm not seeing a battery plummet like this, uh, which is really good. Let's go to settings and let's go to the battery. And if I just wait for the chart to load, you can see, okay, uh, this was before uh, installing uh, iOS 16 here. And after iOS 16 is installed, standby time is good and overall battery drain. I mean, look, this is the iOS 15 chart, yeah? And this is the iOS 16 chart. It's the same, it's the same, and this is beta one. Just think about it. If beta one is good, what about the final release of iOS 16? It's just a little four uh, in my head. Uh, so overall, this is a very stable firmware. It's a very good firmware. Um, the features are a bit lackluster, to be honest, but this is a very stable OS, especially for beta one, and it's impressive. So if you wanna upgrade your iPhone 8 to iOS 16, I see no reason why you wouldn't want to. Um, yeah, that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, make sure to leave a like for the algorithm, bye bye.